think local boycott Tesco. I had a meeting with the, one of the senior guys at Tesco last week. He came in all smiling. He left, <laughs> he left not smiling because I challenged him on so many different things. It's a bit of shenanigan. It's uh, one of my favourite local bands. They, uh, they sometimes play here at the tobacco factory and they're, they're really spirited. OK, I'd better get on with some work. I listen to reason, I don't listen to rant. Listen, Mr. Ferguson, no, no, no. I'm not anti-car, I'm just pro-people, I think. You have insulted and patronised people. Absolute rubbish. I want to do is listen to the quiet voices. I think your dress and your red trousers are now beyond a joke and you're degraded in Bristol. Right, um, Fifty Shades of Red. <laughs> I was at a dinner last night. There's my uh, dinner jacket trousers. I've even got my own tartan, Ferguson Red, because uh, I was prevented from wearing red trousers in a formal dinner, so I thought, well, I'll just get tartan trues, and then they can't deny me. And I've even got sort of claret ones for funerals. Come on in, Bristol! I'm George Ferguson. I'm an architect, and that's, that's what defines me more than anything else. Yes, sir. Can I help you, George? Yeah. Please, Kieran, I'll have 12 for £2. And I was the first uh, high sheriff of Bristol, good? which is a dressing-up role. You know, you have black tights. I did it for the tights. And now I'm the first elected mayor of Bristol. <laughs> I'd like to think that I was a difficult child, but I don't think I was all, all that difficult. Um, actually, at my secondary school, well, I once joined the gas mains to the water main so that when people turned on their Bunsen burners, water came spouting out. I was a bit rebellious. Um, I used to, I used to push things to the limit. Um, I don't know why. This, I hope, is the beginning of some real change in Bristol. I think the decision to stand for mayor was a slightly bonkers one in terms of what was likely to happen. And that change is about having a completely different attitude to the governance of Bristol. One that doesn't look to the parties and what they want, but looks to the electorate and what you want. The big established parties, they had all the advantages. They had all the electoral knowledge, they had all the, the helpers, they had funds, and I had none of that. So it was balmy in a way. But I do believe in the practice of the impossible. <laughs> when I arrived, I was surrounded by cameras and telly and what have you. Marvin Jonathan at Rees, Labour Party, 31,259. There was huge expectation that Labour would win. It was the obvious result. George Ferguson, Bristol first. I just realised that I was probably going to do it. 37,353. Suddenly I found myself in just a new... It was a new world. I therefore give notice that George Ferguson is duly elected as mayor for the city and county of Bristol. Are you going to wind them up? <laughs> no, I'm not going to wind them up. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm going to say I share their anger. I think we're in extreme times. You know, he has come in... Uh, to be mayor at uh, an unprecedented time in terms of uh, the shrinking of council budgets and the rethinking of the way councils work and what they do. I suppose the biggest political occasion for me is the budget in that it's such a crucial thing and it's crucial for the city that we get the budget through and if we don't get it through a budget will be imposed on us from Westminster that will really hurt. We better go down. Face the music. 
Yeah, if that's what you call it. I'm Zoe Sear, and my grand title is Mayoral Initiatives and Partnerships. I was the person that the elected mayor chose to bring in with him on his election. The, the rules are he could bring one person in, and that person was me. Traditionally, I suppose the role would be classed as a political advisor. George was very keen that he didn't actually want a political advisor. He just wanted a regular human being. So there's a lot around translating what the mayor would like to happen into a language that's understood by the 8,000 people that work in the city council and vice versa. Hi, Pete. Hello, George, you well? Yeah, I am at the moment. <laughs> so we'll just move on now to item seven. I'd like to formally uh, propose my first budget as, as Bristol's first elected mayor. It's been a tough job finding the 35 million to balance this budget while doing our very best to maintain essential services. I have to balance what I passionately believe in with what is possible, with what is practical and what is deliverable. Uh, well, as an independent, it is quite a, a lonely role in a way, but I don't, uh, don't, don't, don't uh, shed a tear for me about that. If I was a mayor from one of the parties with a large group on city council, it would make it much easier for me, for instance, as a party of one, as an independent, um, I have to negotiate the budget through um, four parties. I don't feel able to support these measures and the impact they'll have on residents in my ward, and I think many of the savings are, in fact, illusory. To face £35 million worth of cuts is just unthinkable, and they're cuts just too far. As Labour councillors, we cannot accept that the government should be visiting this huge level of cuts, and so we will be abstaining from the budget. Please cast your votes urgently. Uh, I declare the budget as amended for 2012-13 passed. Thank you. Good. Done it. We're in the clear. I have to say that I'm, I think that I have more friends than foe on the council, and it could have been a lot more contentious. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Got that over with. There's a lot of work to do there. Well, we're in the Bruno Buttery on the um, south side of the old city docks. And all life is here. It's a very democratic spot. There's nothing pretentious about it. Um, it's a special place for me because you can sit here and see so much of Bristol and so much of my personal history as well. I arrived in Bristol in 1965. In 1966, I bought a little house in Clifton Wood for £900. Seems so ridiculously cheap. But they were going to demolish that hillside. So I started a campaign to keep the hillside. So immediately I got very involved with the city. That was in the 60s. In the 70s I got involved with a gang of people who decided that we should buy the cranes back off the scrap merchant that the city had sold them to. So we saved the cranes. And with the proceeds of selling the cranes back to the city, which we embarrassed them to do, we bought the first yellow ferry. If you can make a difference to people's lives, it makes your own life so much more worthwhile, and there is nothing more worthwhile than being able to do that through being a mayor of the city that you love. Morning, all. Morning. Morning. We've got a long agenda, so let's get going as quickly as possible. I think George has handled remarkably well coming into what is a, an alien environment. If you think of him as a successful businessman who's always dealt with business people, for him to come into what is a very staid, process-led, rather slow-moving organisation, I think that was always going to be a challenge. Anything else in the remaining two minutes? <laughs> George gets frustrated at the lack of ability to do things really quickly. We get, you know, six or seven ideas a day. You have to follow his Twitter to find out what, it, what he's thinking. Right. Jason, Bedminster bid. It is a real culture shock for the establishment of the council to suddenly have this tornado come in and say, well, actually, I'm only here for an hour, so you've got to get it sorted quickly. Thanks, Andrew. Brilliant. 
Okay. Great. It's something which has been quite interesting to watch. I mean, I've given you four minutes, and I did make it clear that it was three minutes. I find this most regrettable. You didn't turn up for the scrutiny commission. I was not... I was not... In, I'm sorry, Councillor Hopkins. It's the first time I've been aware that even I was expected at that Friday meeting. Councillors feel that they're now rather second-class goods. I think he's sad about that, but nevertheless, that's inevitable when you concentrate power in one person. I, I have a job to do running this city, and people should know that. Sit uh, down we, now. We, we, we have okay. just a few Thank more you. points that were made by no, the no. All Party Scrutiny you, you Commission. Can... Do you wish to hear them or not? I'm sure I will hear them later. Thank you very much. OK. OK. Anyway, uh, yes. we should do the formalities. Yeah, Welcome OK. Welcome to Whitchurch Park Ward, the best ward in Bristol. Thanks, t <laughs> Thanks <laughs> Tim. Yeah. OK, I'm not going to argue with that. Well, I think as the mayor holds all the executive power, he represents all of the people of Bristol. It's quite important he does get around the city. Hello, I'm George, the mayor. Going there and looking at wards with councillors is an important role and does give us a chance to get George to connect with some of our residents. Can I come and sit at the end here? And, uh... Agencies like ourselves are so disadvantaged now. We've lost 46%, George, of our organisation. Yeah. You've got a greater need for our agencies, for the local volunteer agencies, and you're taking it away. I mean, you know the bigger picture, that we had saved 34 million out of last year's, out of this year's budget, rather, this coming year's budget. We've probably got to save 60 or 70 million out of the following two years. So, some things are going to give. You know, I mean, we can't escape that. Um, what we've got to, therefore, look at is how we most intelligently use that money um, to minimise the impact on actual services on the ground. And I think the voluntary sector and the local voluntary sector and the small organisations actually are part of the answer, not the problem. So the pressure on people's lives is very, very real. You have to start thinking about what kind of services is Bristol City Council going to, going to prioritise. And for me, especially representing my ward, the big one is still the tale of two cities. There are people for whom they feel as if they don't belong to the Bristol that they hear George talking about. So Bristol applied to be European Green Capital in 2015 and there's a two-stage process. You make a technical application on a range of different subjects like energy, waste, transport, and a shortlist is created. 50% of Bristol's waste used to in landfill. Now we're in the frame for European Green Capital. We've got the final pitch and I feel very responsible because a lot hangs on it. We really thought we, we ought to win it because we're going into the final in first place after the technical stage. There's that moment when you suddenly realise this is it. It's real pressure. It's ours to lose. We're going to try and do, as best we can, a full run-through. Our first run-through, if we're all honest, was a bit of a road crash. People think uh, that it's not... That, um, but European green capital... Is George just hadn't had time to really think about what it was that he really wanted to say. You learn the most in your first practice. So, the plan is to try and do a complete run through, as per usual. It kicks off with Graham. Graham absolutely kicks off. So I'll be Graham. Yep. Is that all right? The film go first and no. then Graham. No, Graham, then the film. Oh, right. I need the slides then. Mm -hmm. Um, I stood to be. Uh, I stood for uh, for election as uh, mayor of Bristol. Um, sorry, this is not prepared, as you can tell, but I will be um, absolutely uh, on the button when it comes to. It. Insofar as today's rehearsal, to be blunt, it was rough today. You need to demonstrate a lot more active listening, a lot higher energy. I mean, mine will be very different. I react well to pressure, and I, you know, it's fine. The pressure on the day is when people really perform. I'm almost getting goosebumps from thinking about it, because this team effort that had gone together for months of practice and arguments and, and OK, we're here now, this is it. Real 